Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards here for Pour Some Stamps today and I'm very excited to be bringing you this really cute, fun little box card that I made. It's my son's birthday shortly and I thought he would enjoy this one. So I'm using the So Many Candles stamp set, I'm using the Snail Mail stamp set and I also pulled out the Fall Signs stamp set just for that bucket of flowers there. I'm also using the Retro Confetti Stencil, which I haven't had a play around with yet, so I was quite keen to try this one out. So to start with, I have gone ahead and colored and cut out all of my images. I used my Copic markers for my coloring today, and then just added some white gel pen details to everything. I've also gone ahead and assembled my box card. Now I used a die today, but these are quite simple to make without a die. In fact, I have um, created one previously and I'll link the video up here for you to have a look at if you want to learn how to make one without any specialty dies. It's quite straightforward. I've also cut these two pieces which go on the front and the back from some white cardstock and then this kind of sentiment strip which will go right on the front. So for that white piece, this is one of the pieces, I cut this from some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm going to use the Retro Confetti stencil on top of this. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different with this stencil today. So I decided to try using a number of different inks, um, uh, different colours, and just this tiny little blending brush. It's not really a blending brush, it's actually a makeup brush that I bought at my local supermarket. So I'm using a, a pink, a green, a purple and a yellow ink. I'm using Concord and Ninth. This one is Honeysuckle, um, but you can use whatever inks you have in your stash. And I just thought that this would be kind of fun to try out to use lots of different colours on the stencil. So once I'd added all of my pink, I went in there with the purple. This one is eggplant and it's really juicy, this one. <laughs> um, this ink kind of went everywhere, but I think it worked out okay. It wasn't perfect. Um, you probably need to be a little bit uh, steadier handed than I was to get it exactly perfect. But I think it turned out kind of nice in the end. I liked the look that it gave. So in between each application of color, I'm just removing the stencil from the background, wiping it off with a damp cloth and drying it again with some paper towel, and then just placing it back over in the same spot. It's pretty easy to line up each time. And um, I just continued that with each color. So now I'm going in with this gorgeous clover ink. This is a lovely kind of brightish, deep green. Um, and yeah, just trying to be relatively careful about where I dab that ink on. As I say, I didn't get it perfect. It did kind of um, jump into other areas where I didn't exactly want it, but on the whole, I think it turned out okay, and I just thought that this was a fun way to try and use the stencil today. Now, obviously, you could go ahead and just use one color all over the stencil, or you could um, kind of dab ink in certain areas of the stencil and change colors that way rather than trying to do each individual confetti piece as I'm doing here. It was a little bit long-winded, but I think it turned out nice, and I really liked the result in the end. So once I'd finished up with the green, I pulled out this yellow. This one is Buttercup, I believe. And again, it's a nice bright yellow. And I just thought that these colors worked well together and also kind of matched the colors that I've used for my coloring today. I chose a purple um, card base for my card today simply because my son loves purple. It's his favorite color. So I thought it was ideal to use for my card base. Now, as always, when I'm trying to do colors randomly on something, I don't know if you find this, but I always end up with one color that um, I, I end up using more than the other colors. <laughs> so for me, this was the yellow. I was trying to be quite um, light with the other colors, and I think I ended up leaving too much space for the yellow. So I did bring in um, the other colors again, just to add a little bit of extra to that bottom area there where I felt like it was gonna be a little bit too yellow heavy. I probably didn't need to bother because you're probably not gonna see this one very much. It's gonna be covered up by the kind of steps in my box card. So um, yeah, probably didn't need to be too worried about the colors down here, but you know, I was having fun playing around with the stencil and um, kind of, just, I was zoning out, just enjoying the process, so it was fun. So here's the big reveal. I left the stencil, and you can see my background piece there complete. And as I say, not perfect, but I think it turned out pretty good. 
So next up I have the sentiment strip and I'm going to go ahead and stamp out that happy birthday sentiment which comes from the So Many Candles stamp set. I'm using my VersaFine ink for this. This is a nice crisp black ink and I'm trying to center it up. I didn't actually get it perfect but with these scripty sentiments, I don't think it's too bad, but I decided just to add a little bit of extra on there. So there are these little confetti pieces which come in that So Many Candles stamp set, and I just decided to stamp those at either end of my sentiment as well. Now I stamped them out in the eggplant ink that I used for my confetti stencil pieces, and then I just decided to color them in with my Copic markers. So I'm using the same colors that I used um, for the images that I had already colored. So um, I've got some pinks, which were the same color as my flowers. I've got green, which I'd used on the little present that I colored in. I've got yellow, which I also used on the flowers and on one of my snails, and then purple, which I used on one of my snails too. So um, I just thought that that added a little bit of extra interest to the sentiment. So once I'd finished with that, it was just a case of attaching everything down onto my box card. So I'm just using liquid glue to attach everything down. I'm starting with that sentiment panel and I am trying to line it up and center it up. I always have trouble with this. I ended up finding it a little bit easier to fold it flat and do it that way. And I think I got it pretty well centered, maybe not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, I'm then gonna go ahead with that back panel piece that I had stenciled on and I'm going to attach that down to the back and this just leaves a nice little border all the way around um, and just I think it just creates a really cool little background I love that stencil I'm definitely going to be using this one again it was lots and lots of fun so now I'm just trying to figure out where my images are going to go and I decided to pop that cake in behind that last um, step on my card there just I wanted it not to sit up too high. It's just slightly higher than the edge of the box guard, but I figured that that was okay. Next up, I have these two little flower tubs and I'm gonna put one on that middle step and then one at the front, which is gonna go behind the sentiment strip. So I have, I mean, you can make these box cards as full as you want. You can add more steps if you want. I just added three. I find that three is kind of like the magic number. I can fit plenty of images in without it looking too crowded and um, I've got plenty of real estate to work with, um, you, but you can add more or less, whatever works for you. Now I'm just playing around with my snails and trying to figure out where I'm going to put them. So I decided to pop that yellow one in the front and the purpley colored one in the middle, just kind of decided to push them over towards, kind of towards the right hand side. Um, but not so that he's tucked behind those flowers. I still want to be able to see him. And then my little yellow one is going to go right at the front, just behind that sentiment. Now, all that's left are the two little images that I have, which is the present and the little um, envelope. So I wanted it to look like these little snails were off to a garden party, because <laughs> obviously they live in the garden. They're slithering past the bowls of flowers and bringing their presents and their cards along with them and slithering past this gorgeous looking chocolate cake, which is all ready to be eaten. <laughs> so that's the front of my card complete. And now with that final white piece, I'm just gonna attach that to the back. This just gives me a place to write my sentiment so that when I give it to my son for his birthday, I'll be able to write some birthday wishes on the back there. Um, so you can obviously stamp a sentiment on this pit piece even <laughs> as well if you want to or you can even add another image I just decided to keep it plain and I have plenty of room to write my sentiment so that is this one complete I hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give it a thumbs up please do subscribe to the Pawsome Stamps channel we would love to see you come back again here are a couple of other videos that you may be interested in and thank you so much for watching today take care everybody